Welcome back to DXB Today. Uh, we, we are talking about education and learning, whether it's old school learning, new school learning, who are you, what are you doing, what's it all about? Well, we have so many wonderful guests on the show who are joining us to help us a know a little bit more about this wonderful subject. And our next guest is a thought leader creating an educational impact across the region. Please welcome Basim Abudaga to the show. Basim, thank you so much for joining us. Well, really appreciate you. So you're from Reimagine Ed. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So thank you. Would you say so when you, you normally have a name like that, you're redefining, like reshaping. So you're a bit of a, a disruptor, would you say? Ah, uh, uh, pretty much. I think I was born into the space. Even before I was born, I was a bit lucky. My grandfather came to the region in 1936. Oh, so over wow. 90 years ago, and part of his journey was to establish education. So he started in little huts on the on the beach. No air conditioning, of course. Uh, and uh, a few years later, uh, my uh, mom got into it as well. So she became a principal of a school uh, back in Kuwait. And then my wife's an educator as well. So I kind of found my niche. I, there's nowhere, nowhere, no way to escape education. <laughs> um, and luckily, I uh, was actively involved in, in advising uh, schools on their investment strategies and their growth pa uh, uh, plans. And in the journey, I, I started touching on various uh, technology uh, requirements and assets and the need for them to expand and grow and um, we invested in education in the early uh, 2014s so we got a, a better hands-on involvement in it and started mentoring uh, a lot of co-founders uh, and lovely and very intelligent people that needed some access into these schools so from the investment from the um, advisory point uh, we we decided to come together myself and Aman who we, uh, we um, came together during COVID, uh, we pitched an idea to build the educational ecosystem or the edtech ecosystem in the UAE. We felt that that was something that was really missing. And uh, we uh, pitched it off to, um, uh, actually it was at the Rewired Summit at, around the expo time. Yeah, I remember. And uh, we ended up uh, getting our first check from Dubai Cares, which was a pretty exciting journey. So they kind of believed in us and they thought, hey, somebody needs to uh, be crazy enough to do this. So hence, yeah, the disruption, I guess. Yeah, Dubai Cares was a, a wonderful. They had their own pavilion. It was it was wonderful. Yeah, it was a great place. Yeah. Basim, as someone who grew up in a family full of educators, you said your wife is an educator. Um, you are the best person to ask this question. What would you say is the advantage of online learning and how is it transformed the way we consume information today? So, so I think in today's environment, your real uh, currency and what really matters and is, is the skills that you learn. And I think um, we strongly believe that within, I mean, if you can't reinvent yourself every couple of years, then you kind of lose your relevancy in today's environment. So, um, you know, to constantly acquire knowledge has to be an ongoing journey. And to be able to do that, learners need to find alternative solutions. Effectively, the online learning or everything that's, all the ecosystem that supports it is, has become a very valuable um, uh, area to focus on. And, and we believe in that very much. You mentioned Dubai Cares, yeah. and you also um, showcased how you're trying to have bigger impact. And I was wondering, how are you leveraging philanthropy in this space? So we, uh, we loved technology, certain technologies that build 21st century skills. And the best part about EdTech is that it actually crosses boundaries. So where you are not limited to delivering education or through technology to an individual classroom where, you know, where, where there's bricks and mortar, now you're really going beyond this. And so any underprivileged community under um, or displaced community can benefit from the same quality of education because it's all online. So now you literally can cross these borders and, and that's an area that we find super uh, uh, important for us. Uh, you know, we feel that for the first time you're you're able to deliver equitable uh, education to a lot of different people and organizations. So. Now, Basim, we've been talking a lot about distance learning, online learning, so many solutions, and as we mentioned before, people not around can get yeah. top-notch learning. But I want to talk about micro-learning. Is there anything that you're investing in when it comes to uh, little pieces of information that we get throughout the day? I think that's the trend, that's the future. We've all got very, very limited uh, uh, memories and, and ability to focus these days. So Some the, more than others. <laughs> I'm telling you, so the bite size uh, education is probably one of the most common uh, plat you know, directions to go, especially with, with programs like TikTok uh, and everywhere else, because now pe that's where a lot of people get their knowledge, their experience, and it's so diverse. It's not just focused on a specific area. 
Um, I was recently indoctrinated into the deep dark web. So within, after a minute of speaking into a camera, um, uh, the lips and words were coming out together with my voice, plugged into an AI, and now I can literally deliver any, in any language, any topic, in any location, every background, every environment. And that is, uh, is, is, is fascinating because, you know, you can take little chunks out of that program and deliver it or, or, or the initiative and, and, and deliver it in, uh, to various communities or, or, or areas. And We're in the future, aren't we? Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, so how do, to talk about the future. How do you see the future of, of, of learning and education? It's challenging because uh, there's, there's a very large component of individualized learning, and I'm a very big fan of it. The technology supports it today. So every person walks into this box today. They, there's, a, there's a saying, I don't know if you've heard it before, called bells and cells, and that's kind of what classrooms are like today. 30 students are locked up in a cell, the bell rings, they go to another cell. And that doesn't work anymore. You need to start, uh, I mean, the, the future of education is where every single student gets their own specific plan and goes after it. So if they're into sports, then that's the, they go after the center of excellence and they are able to learn sports at the caliber of, of any professional within uh, the schooling system. Tailor-made. Yes. I yes. like that. Yes. Basim, could you share a success story of any project or company that Reimagined has invested in that has completely transformed a student's life? Yeah, so we, we partnered up with this uh, 21st Century Skills uh, platform that was very focused on delivering the latest and greatest of the, uh, um, of the coding, web development, and all, all that exciting part. Uh, and, and, they, and they married it with critical thinking skills uh, to go a little bit beyond just delivering a program. And it was very well scaffolded in a way that allows students to learn at their own pace. Now, uh, in conversations with, uh, you know, with various uh, school groups and, and even some ministries, we were, in, we were requested to transform that package into an entrepreneurial package that allows students to go a little bit beyond just learning those skills. So they'd learn these skills and what, do you, what can you use with these skills? And now that's really been transforming students across many generations, or across the generation that we're talking about. So that was a, a, a lovely uh, journey and it continues to thrive. And again, if you um, wear the philanthropic hat and you talk about uh, the, uh, uh, the, the other channels of taking it across to the underprivileged communities they get to, and displaced communities, they get to learn how to solve their problems as well as using those skills. Basim, you're doing amazing work. We love to hear it, but it does make me think, where was all this when I was a kid? Yeah. Right, uh, right, right, just exactly. Just exam papers. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for the work that you do and Reimagined, and thank you so much for being on DXB today. Uh, pleasure. But for right now, before we say goodbye to you, Dr. Sonia, we've got a little something for you. Yes. Are you ready for this? <laughs> no, but Because neither am I. <laughs> that makes two of us. All right. Okay, that's not yours. This is the one. <laughs> Harris, why are your cue cards behind my cushion? Anyway, <laughs> right, um, so we're going to ask you as many questions as possible within 60 seconds and you need to answer them as quickly as possible. Are you ready for this? I will try. Your time is three, two, one, let's go. If you weren't in the education sector, what would you be doing? Communications. Your first job? A barista. Your motto in life and in work? It's going to be okay, just do it anyways, even if you're scared. A superpower you wish you had? Turning off my mind. <laughs> A trend you see coming to the education space? Uh, being more free and more open. Your go-to restaurant in Dubai? Oh, that was the hardest. <laughs> um, I might just say Wokio. A change you wish to see in the learning space? More humility from the actors. <laughs> Most used app on your phone? Well, hmm, probably WhatsApp. <laughs> if you could have dinner with anyone dead or alive, who would it be? Uh, my family. <laughs> um, your time's up, but I'm gonna ask you one last question. Why Dubai? Oh, Dubai adopted me a long time ago. It's home as a westernized Arab. I have found that I could just be who I am in such an authentic way. And we can have our daughter be exposed to so many cultures and be who she is. And um, just have this, it's not tolerance, although that's the word that the government used. I think it's, it's an authentic 
real connection to anybody and anything without any judgment. And I just think that was the best place you could possibly raise a child. Great answers. Thank you so much, Dr. Sonia, for your time. You did really well in our DXB in 60 quiz. And thank you so much, Basim, for sticking with us as well. It's a pleasure. Thank pleasure. You. Wonderful. You're doing amazing things with your philanthropy. Yep. Really appreciate you. Cheers. Thank you. And please come again as well. Yeah, I would be delighted yeah. to. Absolutely. Wonderful. So stick around, everyone. It's not all for us yet. We have the wonderful Sophie Magali playing us out. You don't want to miss it. Sweet, soulful sounds. See you soon.